Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about endocrine therapy and bone mineral density loss or osteopenia and osteoporosis. I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We are always putting out new content. If you have an idea for a video, pop it in the comments below and you might be surprised to see it show up on our channel in just a couple of weeks. So let's talk about endocrine therapy and loss of bone mineral density. We do have other videos about osteoporosis and about the bisphosphonates, which is one type of treatment for bone mineral density, but I wanted to give a bigger overview of endocrine therapy and loss of bone mineral density. So our bones are made up of different kinds of bone, and there's a type of bone called trabecular bone. Trabecular bone is what gives the vertebral bodies their height that's in our spine. It gives the spinal bones their height. If trabecular bone is weakened, you can start to see fractures in the spine and you can also see them in the hips and in the wrist, really any place in the body that has a trabecular bone. There are different treatments for breast cancer that can affect bone mineral density and not in a good way. And then tamoxifen can help if you're postmenopausal. So I'll make sure to address that as well. The most common drug that we see lowering bone mineral density are the aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors work by essentially eliminating, temporarily eliminating estrogen in your body. And so without estrogen, which your bones enjoy and get strengthened by estrogen, the bones become thinner. They can become a little thinner and that's called osteopenia. Penia is from the Greek word for few or little. So osteo, few, less bone. And osteoporosis is when the bone becomes very light and is really much less robust. The aromatase inhibitors cause substantial loss of bone mineral density in one in four people after five years of being on the medication. And the areas that are most commonly affected are the spine, meaning your back, really the whole backbone, your wrists and your hips. Interestingly enough, this is where we see bone mineral density decreases with just time alone. So as we get older, we all want more time, right? We don't want more age, but we want more time. With time, we all lose bone mineral density, men and women alike. Aromatase inhibitors can accelerate that. And then when you come off the aromatase inhibitors, your bone mineral density will go back up for the sole reason that you now have more estrogen again in your body. It will never come back up to it was when you started because time has passed and bone mineral density goes down with time. Now tamoxifen is interesting. If you're premenopausal, because tamoxifen looks like estrogen to the bone, it's actually a weaker estrogen than your body's own estrogen. So instead of estrogen from your ovaries and all your tissues getting to the bone, now tamoxifen gets to those alpha receptors in the bone and it's not as strengthening if you're premenopausal. But if you're postmenopausal, when you don't make estrogen in your ovaries anymore, it actually is strengthening thins your bones because it looks like estrogen. So it's a funny drug. If you're postmenopausal and you have light bones, tamoxifen will increase your bone mineral density. If you're premenopausal, it can lower it. It doesn't generally lower it to levels like osteopenia or osteoporosis, and we generally don't check bone mineral density with a DEXA test because we know that once you come off tamoxifen, your bones will be stronger again. The other treatment that can lower your bone mineral density in the treatment of breast cancer is ovarian suppression or removal of the ovaries. So if you are still menstruating after chemotherapy and your tumor's estrogen receptor positive, it's very likely you will be offered ovarian suppression where you're given injections to make your ovaries think they should go to sleep or you may have your ovaries removed. And just like with aromatase inhibitors and just like go, going through menopause, bone mineral density goes down when estrogen goes down. If you got ovarian suppression or removal and an aromatase inhibitor, you can imagine in the first couple of years, you're gonna see a drop in your bone mineral density for those two reasons, both lowering estrogen from the ovaries and lowering estrogen from the aromatase inhibitor. 
The last thing I want to cover is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy itself can lower bone mineral density and it's most likely the dexamethasone, the steroid we give to keep you from being up all night, throwing up. So we want to make sure you don't get sick as a dog from chemotherapy and we give you steroids to help prevent you from being nauseated. But that amount of steroid in that short a time can lower your bone mineral density. Also, chemotherapy can make your ovaries stop working. So there are a couple reasons why chemotherapy itself can cause loss of bone mineral density. Oof, this is a lot. It's like you can't turn left or right without hearing something that's going to make your bones weaker. What can you do? Well, one thing you can do is make sure if you have light bones that are at risk for fracture that this get detected. We tend not to do a baseline bone mineral density test called a DEXA scan. In people, when they go through menopause, we ask people not to smoke, not to drink, eat calcium and vitamin D, and do weight-bearing exercise. That's really all you can do when you first go through menopause. Once somebody hits 60, 65, we do recommend a baseline DEXA scan checks for bone mineral density, and if it's low, all those other things I mentioned, calcium up to 1200 milligrams a day, vitamin D 800 to even 1600 international units a day, weight-bearing exercise, just walking isn't enough, you have to do weights or do something where you put a little more impact on your bones, we ask you to stop smoking and not to drink alcohol, do all those healthy things to take really good care of your bones. It's also possible that if you have osteoporosis, regardless of the cause, that it will be recommended to you that you take a bisphosphonate. A bisphosphonate is our first line therapy. In people who have impaired kidney function, we might use a drug called denosumab. This is a monoclonal antibody. But the drugs with which we are most familiar are the bisphosphonates. We know their side effect profile, people tolerate them well, and they also won't increase your financial toxicity. I have covered a lot, things you can do. Ask your doctor, when is the right time for me to have a DEXA test? What dose of calcium supplements and vitamin D should I be taking? Any other things I can do to help take the best care of my bones? And of course, you know about smoking and drinking. I've already mentioned that a couple times. Thank you for watching. I know this covered a lot. I want to encourage you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. Your yerba report will take your medical records that you either give us permission to access or that you upload, no matter where you are in the world, generates a report saying this is everything we know about your tumor, these are all the treatments that you've had, and these are the options. This is what you might hear about when you go see the doctor. We give you example questions that you can ask. If you get the premium service, you can ask us all the questions that you want. And it helps you understand the pros and cons of all the different types of treatment that might be available to you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.